Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and this is a Healthcare Z. Today is a weekend morning, and we are going to go on a quick tour of the hospitals in my town. And here is a brand new hospital that is under construction here in town. Looks like it's gonna be nice. And here we have another hospital here in our town. Nice fountains. And here we have another hospital. Panoramic view. Very nice. And here's another hospital in our town. I actually wasn't even going to film this hospital because I had forgotten about it. And then I drove by and I'm like, oh yeah, there's another hospital. And here we have another hospital in our town. I particularly like the slanted roof on this one. So what's the point? The point is, is that my town has a lot of hospitals. That's right, five hospitals and one those hospitals are, they're not at capacity. They are not full. There's a fair number of empty beds in those hospitals. And so that's important because much of the hospital construction is actually financed by the employers and by the much higher reimbursement that employers pay for healthcare services vis-a-vis -vis Medicare and Medicaid. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two is, is that all these hospitals are incredibly close together. I literally only had to drive like five to seven minutes between each of these hospitals within our town. And so what all these hospitals are doing is they're really maximizing for convenience. Instead of having one big hospital or two really big hospitals, you got a bunch of very small hospitals that are all very close to each other. And then point number three is that you would think that, okay, the more hospitals there are, the more competition there is, and so prices would actually go down. But in healthcare, that's actually not the case. And that's not the case because of third-party payment. In other words, it's not the patients that are mostly paying for the hospital services. It's a third party, i.e. the employer and the insurance companies. And then two, because of something called uh, supplier-induced demand. And this is a well-documented phenomenon within healthcare in that in healthcare economics, it's a little different where there's supply and demand, but the supply actually in the form of the doctors and the hospitals, they can actually create demand on the part of patients. And how are they able to do that? It's because of another concept called informational asymmetry, which is that in regards to someone's health and their need for healthcare services, there's obviously a tremendous amount of asymmetry in that the doctors and the hospitals know so much more about healthcare and medicine than the actual patients themselves. And so all of those things combine to create a, you know, medium-sized town that has five hospitals. And that's the point that I want to make today. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.